As soon as you are able, woman, I am railing to make a break that we are on the brink of. My cup is on the table, our love is spilling. Waiting here for you to take a drink of. So if you're tired of the same old story, oh, turn some pages. I'll be here when you are ready to roll with the changes. Oh, Rashawn's got the light out. He's going with it. He's fully embracing. I was going to say, like, did someone else die? I don't know if any. The REO Speedwagon. No, I just, I just was, I've been in an REO Speedwagon kind of mood, man. I mean. Oh, okay. I was like, oh, shit, did he die? The (laughs) truth, he didn't. But in all fairness, you know, when it comes to, a couple things with REO Speedway. Firstly, they ruled the arena rock from like 80 to 82. No In question. all fairness, they, they, they sold that shit out and they were beaten up on Super Tramp. So, you know, they were absolutely killing that market. Oh, uh, right Super there. Tramp. And... In all fairness, their highest, I'm sure their most commercially successful hit was I Can't Fight This Feeling Anymore. But the one I just sang, Roll With The Changes, in my opinion, is the masterpiece. Like, that's... That's that's like vintage REO Speedwagon. That is the shit right there. That is the 100%. You want to distill what a band can do and bring it down? Yeah. Do, roll with the changes. How, how else can you do any better than that? That is that is that is really what they're about. That and it may not have been as as commercially. I'm sure it was pretty commercially successful, but I'm betting I see Rashawn Googling right now that I can't fight this feeling anymore. Hit a higher point in the charts. I bet you that one went all the way to number one, which is, you know, it's a nice song. And I I never could have written it in a million years. I'll totally Mm -hmm. give you that because pop songs aren't easy, but it's a cheesy pop song, right? That is just the simple, straightforward love song without much depth or, or anything going on to it. That one I just sang for you, man, that one came from the heart, right? (laughs) It's just about life getting kind of rocky and interesting and changing shit up. That's, that's, you know, that's, what's all about here. That's what we bring here to the steam. But, uh, gentlemen. That's what, will we, it, what we bring, but will it make oversized cotton eighties panties drop? Uh, probably not. Probably. There I can't is. fight this feel. I mean, it sucks, I don't know. Josh, it, it sucks. let's face it. Let's face it. I can't fight this feeling was I'm sure a, prom song at some point right that was somebody's prom theme no somewhere in there no question wedding song yep yeah Uh, absolutely you know no question about uh, it yeah i did tell you the story about someone wanting to make slide their wedding song so we already went into that which is the awkward it it ended up not being their wedding song but still (laughs) it Mm. was awkward because that song was about an abortion at least i can't fight this feeling was about what leads to that but still, we were all in it. Rashawn, how you doing on your research? You you, you pulling that up on on where it charted? Uh, no, that's oh wait, yeah, I thought I was muted. That was not what I was looking at, looking for. Oh man, you know we we've talked about the porn habit at work, but it's okay. You know, it's, I am it's not at work. For it. uh, I am not yeah, at work. Exactly. So, I am not. Thank at work. you very much. Mm-hmm. Yes, I am on my own time. Thank you very much. And you do not get the right to look through my web and my own history. Wi-Fi. And it's art. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, thank they you very are performers. much. Performers. Yep. Yeah. These women work hard. <laughs> thank you very much. There's there's performance, there's acting going on, even if the dialogue isn't that great. I get it. I understand. It's a whole emotional, whole emotional thing. You have, in fact, tuned into the steam, gentlemen. We have descended once again into the steam tunnels. And apparently Rashawn's got a hot update coming in for us. What is it, Rashawn? Well, when you're talking about REO Speedwagon, all I can think about is Carl from Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Because <laughs> <laughs> in, in the start of the song, ATHF, uh, by our guy Danger Doom, aka MF Doom. <laughs> There's a section where uh, Meatwad uh, tries to basically rap, and Carl's like, uh, "Hey, genius, you even know what that means." Uh, Meatwad says no. So then Carl goes into this diatribe, and I'm just gonna quote it: "Where's the keyboards? Where's the tambourine and the guitar? You know, I mean, stuff that white people like. You know, 
We had a band. We had a piano. Something badass. Like, a, I don't know, like a Ario Speedwagon or something. A hundred and ten percent. Something that white people like. <laughs> this is definitely. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you, I don't know if you can get more Caucasian than Ario Speedwagon and 80s or Carl. arena rock. Or Carl. Or Carl, Carl really. Rock with Tingy <laughs> Hunger Force. Oh, oh God, yeah. I love Carl. I love you gotta love Carl. Come on. Carl's the best. <laughs> Carl is Carl is the motherfucking man, without a doubt. Uh he hundred percent hangs in there, still somehow manages to put up with Meatwad and Master Shake. Uh so he's, he's been killed like 17 times. So you know he gets yeah. the upset. I'm gonna venture because black folks actually love a good song and love a good power ballad. I'm going to say that there's probably more black people that know Ario Speedwagon than do Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Oh, okay. <laughs> Josh is literally talking about how they're selling out arenas for at least two straight years. And we're talking, and you're pairing with a 15 minute show that during its prime time came on at midnight. On a, yes, on a, on a cable sh- station that moved into a subsection of his cable section that a lot of people didn't even <laughs> fucking know existed. So yeah, I'm gonna agree with you. The numbers alone, <laughs> yeah, are probably backing you up. Because yeah, that's a, actually even better. Because you went out of your way to make sure you saw Aqua Teen Hunger Force. You really had to. You had to make sure you went <laughs> really? out of your way. Like you made sure you did. Yeah. I'm going to put my cards on the table here. Aqua Teen Hunger Force was one of, one of the first things I used my TiVo for. Remember that shit? Mm-hmm. Uh, I like I lit I DVR that shit so I could watch it in the morning when I'd get up, you know, because I get up really early in the morning, like 334 or whatever uh, and, and watch that shit. So that was how I got acquainted with Aqua Teen. I was you know, sleeping, but it, true genius. Rest in peace, Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Though there is the movie they put out recently, which I watched. I watched a uh, stream that. So that's good. I did the streaming thing. It is I, Josh the Birdman. We are here. We are back again. Let me give you a quick introduction if this is your first time joining this little symphony of insanity here. Uh, I am joined by my two amazing co hosts, the guys who are our pop culture aficionados and archivists in their own right. Uh, first, I'm going to introduce you to. A man who goes by the moniker of the Three of Clubs. His name is Rashawn Smith. Rashawn, give us his shout out today. What's going on? Hey, yo, what do you do? How do you do? Happy to be with all of you. And that's basically all I have left because I am fucking spent. It has been a hell of a week. It's not over. And uh, yeah, that's probably the most complicated thing you're going to hear from me moving forward. So <laughs> you, buckle you up, people. It. Buckle up, people. This is about to get real remedial. Rashawn got a Rashawn has had a 2020 kind of a day. I mean, it's just been yeah. it's just been handed it to him. So, you know, we're gonna we're gonna send up uh Rashawn all our love and support. But also, I want to introduce you to the one, the only, the star child that is in the uh, uh, mother. Uh, that's the mothership style star child. Though I still secretly in my heart hope he's got a little bit of kiss in there when it comes to the star child. Just saying, it is Gregory Descents. How you doing today? Oh, well, now that you say that, you know, I want to rock and roll all night and party every day. Nah, Look yeah, what you did hey, to me. Look what yeah, you did to me. Hey, don't don't forget Ace wrote uh, back in the New York groove. I mean, come on. Mm-hmm. So just to give him his due away from Kiss, you know, he he went back in the New York groove, which that song rocks. Let's be honest. That shit, Facts. that shit holds up. It is. It it holds up to this day. But how you doing over there? Everything going? Everything going well? Everything treating you well? Oh, loving life. Ready to talk shit about some franchises, man. Hell's yeah, because that is what we do. We talk about franchises, and we talk about things that have gone past their expiration dates. Which, if you've stuck with us long enough, you know, maybe we're there. Maybe we've jumped that shark. I don't know. But just uh, going out there and going into that great wide open and that great beyond. But today, we wanted to come to you. We wanted to talk to you about that moment where we're going to go back to that amazing film. There you go. Amazing film that spawned our, our tagline for today. Broken Arrow, which interestingly enough, did not bring out an IP. 
it just brought out, it just sort of kind of had the 16th resurrection of John Travolta's career and maybe spelt the end of Christian, uh, what's his face's career? <laughs> Christian Slayer. Uh, whoa, back Christian up. Slayer. Did, you, did you just say Broken Arrow resurrected Travolta's career? I said the 16th resurrection of it. It was oh, okay. obviously Pulp Fiction was the first one. I'm talking like, you know, down the line here. Broken Arrow was like he, three years later. Yeah, you know, he just, it, it just, it, he keeps trying. And every once in a while now, he still needs a resurrection. He's still doing it. He had a Super Bowl commercial very recently. But in all fairness, <laughs> doing he an gives old us, dance. The, he, in my opinion, he gives us the title of today's episode when he hits the guy with the, with the, uh, uh, um, with the mag light right across the throat. It looks at him and says, Will you just die? <laughs> Which is still one of my favorite <laughs> lines of that entire film. Uh, good. Good lost classic guys. Go to go check it out. Go check out Christian Slater. And I forget who his leading lady is in that, but I saw her in that uh, that movie with uh, Dylan McDermott about the it was basically BTK, but it was a fictionalized version of BTK. Uh, pretty good about the, uh, you know, the, you know, the I forget what they call that one, but he's like uh, he's killing people and leaving knots. It was pretty cool. It was a, it was a well done performance. So kudos all that go on out check your imdb because i'm not keeping up with this shit today that's just not happening we're gonna we're gonna go on to the meat of the subject matter which is those ips that just no need to be put say, down kids yes those ips that just need to be put down like the distempered pups that they are okay it's just gone on too long i know you all think what we're going to do today i know you all think what i should do you're not going to get it from me but i'll wait my turn i'm going to turn it over to the one, the only Gregory Descents, the star child, starting him off for his 10 minutes of fame and seeing what he thinks and where, yeah, you know, what is that IP that just needs to be put down that has just gone on too long, that is still talking about how the last election was stolen from it, whatever it is, <laughs> like, what the fuck? Like, can you just stop it now? Um, it's a tough one because, you know, like we try not to just sound like, you know, uh, three grumpy old men. Where, uh, but, you know, you can't deny that we are men of a certain generation. And so and you know, with all of this nostalgia and, you know, things making a comeback or things that never went, it's like, how do you really judge it? You know what I'm saying? Like, how do you what do you really say about, you know, a certain uh, property, you know, like, especially if it's made obviously for a younger generation, you know, but, you know, I wouldn't actually say that that younger generation's really enjoying it either. And I think that makes a difference in the conversation. Like, hey, if I can like it. So that's what, I, that's what my bar kind of was. Like, if kids are kind of like, this is dumb. And, you know, we're like, we grew up with whatever it is. And we're like, this is dumb. Then you know what? It's officially dumb. So I tried to lean into things like that. So I definitely like have a list that hurts a little bit because I grew up, on transformers i love transformers okay i still have transformers in my house all right and i'm married but i have transformers like in my heart but transformers needs to stop in general michael bay needs to stop but transformers needs to stop because that's a movie series that it just kept getting more insane as it went and we had a conversation a moment ago about you know being a one-trick pony and whether or not you have to keep giving the audience more of what they ask what they expect of you a person who gives no shit about that scenario is michael bay like he will give you <laughs> 10 times more michael bay if you keep asking for more michael bay and that's what he does in the transformers movies from the first transformers to revenge of the fallen and then uh i can't remember there's like age of extinction and then there's uh the last night the last night is insane by the time he gets to the last night this man is just throwing any sort of absurd garbage at in this film and flying with it not only that it's it's one of those movies where when you watch it you're honestly asking yourself adults approved of this, like a room full of adults said, this is great. This is great. This is great. People who are going to be responsible for hundreds of millions of dollars. And I think the message here is don't give up on your dreams. Don't give up on your dreams. Cause if somebody will make this shit, 
someone will make whatever <laughs> idea it is that's in your mind, man. Believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. That's why we're here, Greg. That's yeah, why we're because, here. Like, because we have not, this I quit. fucking mountain of Michael Madness got made. It got made and it made money. It made money. I'm not even going to shit. Poor Anthony Hopkins. Why would you do that to Sir Anthony Hopkins? That man is a treasure. And you put him in this just pile of dog shit but luckily he's Bro, a, had a house he's an actor he doesn't care he'll, he'll act in anything like he didn't even know what the <laughs> hell this was about they just pointed it they said oh you got a robot sidekick right here and he was like fine and he just went with it and we you know call what? that you the, can... the sir alec guinness face that's what we call that right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. exactly yes you know yes the sir face right yeah and, exactly and the cartoons I like honestly, to call the cartoons the need to stop too because the cartoons uh, they're just they've gone from just uh, things that just aren't the transformers um like they started turning into all kinds of machines and there have been anime versions and there have been headmaster and combiners and just just uh, it's getting way too thick now and there have been super cute versions there have been just online versions there's a netflix version it's just too much and none of it is making any sense like none of it makes any sense at all. So it can absolutely stop. Uh, another verse, because like I said, you know, like uh, my nephew claims to be a fan of these movies. No, the fuck he's not. No, he's not. He doesn't quote the lines. He doesn't watch them. They're stupid. Even if you're a child, these juvenile jokes that apparently are hilarious to Michael Bay are stupid to any other carbon-based biped. No one laughs at these laughs at these movies. No one's enjoying these, you know, just scrap metal rolling over each other. You can't even tell what the action is. And they're ugly. They don't look cool. They don't look badass. They don't look cute. They've got like, you know, insect faces. Who the fuck asked for this? All right. So in this, you know, particular version of Bayhem, I'm not kidding. That's what Michael Bay calls like the atmosphere he creates on the set. Bayhem This particular brand of Bayhem. It can go find Will Smith. You two will gel. Next one. Another one I grew up with was the Terminator. And that shit needs to stop. Go away, Terminator. It's done. It's done. It's to the point where I will take the apocalypse over another movie. Like, I will take a nuclear warhead to the face rather than watch another goddamn Terminator movie. Like, the first one was brilliant. And I'm going to go ahead and say the first one was the only one. I know. I like Terminator 2 also. Right? Terminator 2 was a classic. Like, you redefine the summer movie. But then, oh, God, it needed to stop needed to stop it's just gotten quite literally progressively worse like just all the way up until this last one which was dark fate i think was the last one i think so yeah. yeah i think dark fate was the last one and um i don't know which they didn't even recycle the best ideas they recycled the worst <laughs> ideas I, here's the thing look man if you're not going to at least give me something you know passively entertaining then you know what go ahead and just recycle that same old shit don't get creative don't get creative don't get cute don't get cute give me old ass arnold chasing down some woman who is probably the next person who's going to have you know another chosen one or some shit like that i don't care and let the violence ensue but you're overthinking it Please, please, in the name of God, stop. <laughs> uh, last one, um, and this will take a while, but last one, you know what? The Ghostbusters needs to die. <laughs> Ghostbusters need to die and turn into a ghost that gets busted by the Ghostbusters because the Ghostbusters movies are a fucking tragedy at this point. Because the first one, let's be honest, wasn't supposed to work. It wasn't supposed to work as a film, but it was an entertaining movie. It had you know, it was music, it had jokes, and it's not exactly a sci-fi film. It's kind of silly. I mean, this giant marshmallow man walks down the street like it's you don't know where it's going. But movies like that, especially in the 80s, were great, you know, like they were, you know, kind of genre redefining, you know. 
Ghost, and then a long time happened, and then Ghostbusters 2 happened. Best thing about that movie? Bobby Brown's song. Oh my God. <laughs> well, I guess it gonna have to take control. Oh, we got, we got, we got, we got. Oh, sorry. Everything sorry. else about it when they were trying to fight, you know, this painting with some positivity ooze was fucking stupid. <laughs> All right. can, can I just everything give a you're shout doing out right now is wrong. I just wanted to tell you that. Go ahead, can, can I just give a shout out to Bobby Brown's cameo in the movie where he shows up and says, yo, my nephew wants one of those fat proton packs. Oh, yeah. Can I get Bobby one? Bobby Brown was that, in it. That's true. Fucking That's true. amazing. Fucking nailed that line. Right and um, yeah, you know, give, give an Oscar to Rick Moranis. But the rest of it, um, the 2016 one, look, I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it. But about halfway through, it stopped being funny. And it can be a lot of things, but you got four comedians in this movie that's supposed to be a comedy, and it just it just wasn't that funny. It just started getting dumb, and it just wasn't that funny. I did not hate it, though. I thought it was pretty good, and I love the fact that also Charles Dance is in that movie, and he also has Alec Guinness Syndrome, because he doesn't give a shit if he said either. I literally <laughs> just listened to an episode where you brought up Charles Dance. That's it. I, I love Charles Dance. I'm still waiting for the golden child too. And then this last go- <laughs> And then this last That ghost- is not on your list of things that need to die. You need more golden. No, but it was that. Yeah, it was Greg shaming us cuz we did bring up golden child. <laughs> yeah, I need another golden child movie. Uh but this last uh, Ghostbusters movie where they take some kids from Stranger Things and they go out in the middle of nowhere and fucking bust some ghosts. All right, you're you're done. You're done. No more Ghostbusters for you. You're done. You don't get to have <laughs> any more Ghostbusters. Um, I mean, I could go on and on, but, you know, parting shot to uh, Star Wars. Just watch A New Hope and Clone Wars, and then just don't watch anything else. If there's one piece of advice I can give you, dear listener. You know, I mean, Greg, I feel like you needed to be in the pitch meeting for Dark Fate because then I think you would have been a little bit more on, on board. I mean, hear, hear me out. I'll give you a quick couple of notes. Look, first, we're going to kill John. All right, all right, you're in now. You're in. Cool. Now, second, <laughs> going to give you a younger Arnold, but a Leslie Jordan version. Huh? Huh? How you feel about that? Yeah, you're in? Nope. Fuck it. Let's go ahead and get to production. For God's sakes, just send the Terminator army through the thing and let's have us a post-apocalyptic fight. That's what we're all really waiting for. Send them. I'm just going to respond with... They're already here. From the future. I had had so much more hope. I had so much more hope for the Christian Bale version. It was McGee directing... I wanted salvation. That. I was happy. Salvation. They nailed the trailer. That's what got you. They, they nailed, nailed the, trailer. the trailer. And even at the end, they gave him the three marks on his face that he has. When you see briefly at Terminator 2, I'm like, okay, you kind of tried, but it just fucked up the middle completely. That mm-hmm. second act is just bullshit. I don't know what they were doing with that second act. Like the first act's okay. Third act, okay, you got your little Easter egg in there. But I was so well, disappointed by that. A lot, I mean, I wasn't even going to touch on this, but this is a problem with a lot of franchises when they go too long. They try to answer questions or give fan service to things that, frankly, they either aren't set up to do or never really intended to do. It's no different than giving the midichlorian like, answer for uh, Star Wars. Because right. think about Were it. Were we that, even asking that question? It, well, in this Terminator case, what happened, I would argue, is that they did listen to the fans a little too much because really that Terminator was the first time we saw the future world. Where a lot of us were wondering, like, what it actually looked like, what did the resistance mm. look like, what was the infrastructure, yep. what was that world? They gave it to us, but unfortunately, they focused too much on that and not on an actual plot. And uh, that's the one with uh, Jay, what's his name, right? He had like that two year like arc where he was kind of the Chris uh, Pratt of that time. And then like, literally, yeah. Yeah. Jay Courtney. <laughs> yeah, Jay Courtney, yeah, like there were two years where Jay Courtney was in everything. Yeah, like they right. focused they focused too much on everything but John Connors. So you, they gave right. us a future world. They gave us Christian Bale. They Bale, basically gave exactly. us Christian Bale coming off of the set of Rain of Fire. 
So yep. like it was, it was almost <laughs> the same person. It was, gave us a real like, all right, cool, we're here. And then they're like, all right, now we're gonna focus on something else. Like, are you kidding me? It's it's they they run into this, franchises run into the same problem all the time. Aliens, same thing. Where did aliens come from? Well, we'll give you Prometheus. Fuck. All right, well, we'll give you covenant. God damn <laughs> no, but it. You know what? You hit on something because at the same time, I feel like they dangerously overthink it. Mm -hmm. Because Prometheus is a great example. What the fuck was that? We didn't need to go back <laughs> right. to you know the ancient firmament, dude. Like just <laughs> what other what, what what bizarre ass planet they came from and let us know. But you're going to tell me that the way they came about is because of this convoluted way that this tentacle monster face fucked this bald guy. Honestly, that whole about. movie could have been 30 seconds of Neil uh, deGrasse Tyson just standing in front of a black screen and saying slowly, pants, Mervia. All right. Yeah, <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> that's 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 All right. <laughs> All right. I'm going to step up to the plate for my 10 minutes of fame. Firstly, just going to take a small aside here for one minute and just defend fan service. Okay. Fan service is like it was like complaining about finishing at the end of sex. That's what you showed up for in the first place. So mm. stop complaining about it. Stop pretending like that's not what you're here for because mm. you were here for that. It's what you were here for. Don't pretend otherwise. OK, I'm just I'm done with I'm done with everyone complaining about fan service. That's no, no. what it's there for, dude. Uh, that's no, what you're there for. I'm not, not going to let you walk right away from that. It's wrong. Yeah, I'm not going to let you walk away from that. That's like telling your sexual partner, I love it when you lick behind my ear, and then that person proceeds to do it for a full fucking hour. You're not there for that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what you do it in public. You're not there for that. Hey, but then saying just the saying the catchphrase you want to hear is licking behind your ear. Let's be fair about that, okay? Yeah, no, no, <laughs> no one's not, walking away from it, that it sexual encounter wrong. being happy. <laughs> no. Yeah, it can Maybe land wrong. for the full hour. <laughs> it can land, all right. You know, this is, there's a method to it. There's a style. But all I'm saying is let's just not, let's not hammer on fan service. And speaking of that, oh, I want to give a, I want to give a, I want to give a shout out to a, uh, to, a franchise that killed it correctly, that being the Matrix. And here's the thing. Are you, are you got last, mind? <laughs> let me finish. I'm completely last, with him on this. That last Matrix movie was putting the Awful. nine millimeter, was putting the 22 behind the ear, is what it was. They they came to Lana, they absolutely extorted her into that. They made her do that shit. Okay. Yeah, I see. You and what it. she gave them if you watch that movie is total parody and is a giant extended middle finger to the Warner brothers franchise written into it, even talking about, about Viacom being their fucking parent company. <laughs> it's going to make it with or without her. And she writes that into the script. Now, is it a good film? No, but if you watch it as parody, it's fucking genius. It's, it's absolute. Really and I got to really? I got to I got to follow you home. Up a little bit on that. There's going to be the another. fact the fact that the new the machines new uh, secret weapon is making everybody just hurl themselves <laughs> <laughs> at Neo at the girls was because in the first movie, it was anyone's a potential agent. And so right. that was kind of saying that, yeah, anyone can be that person that turns against you. But in this one, yep. the fact that she took it a step further and was like, yeah, everyone's a mindless idiot that'll just throw themselves at oh, Neo. So, <laughs> at Neo. I mean, yeah, so uh, Lana, uh, it was God brilliant. Yeah, but to take your Lana, analogy, they put that 22 to their head, but they're going to wake up in the hospital a couple of months from now pissed off that they didn't aim correctly. I'm telling you right now, I hear you, but I, I do not think it, it's it, it came out the way you really hoped it did. I, I don't think they actually put the nail in the coffin like you're hoping. Lana I, took I'm, her I'm 100 percent with Josh on this one because. When I was first watching it, I was like, this movie is a fucking mess. What is this horrible movie? Right. And then it gets to the point where um, uh, it uh, goes meta. Starts fighting Smith. Oh, yeah. And then I was Who's just kind of like, and wait a yeah. minute. And then that Frenchman shows up. The French guy from the other one shows up. And I'm like, oh, God, wait a minute. that was. And then the crew, genius. who is basically a parody of the crew. 
Yes. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. It's the a fact that they, the fact that it even opens Keep up with the, the same better. fucking scene as the first one. So, all right. You know, I give you, I, I, I wish got I saw the movie Lana. in y'all minds. <laughs> Luna, Lana, you know, she did her best, man. I mean, good God bless her. And you know, that's, you took your best shot. You tried and your best the shot man. was cloud Atlas. Let's be honest. Her, Hey, Hey, you know, she's fighting the man. Okay. And that ain't easy to do. Because they got all the money and it's a big club and you ain't in it. So don't ever forget what uh, what my man George Carlin said. Tom but Hanks, but Asian. Sorry. The Tom <laughs> Hanks, but Asian. Yes. <laughs> I need a bumper sticker that says that shit right now. Tom Hanks, but Asian. Now, we just we're going to briefly, I'm just going to tap on Fast and Furious. Well, we know that that shit's dead. Like, anyway, moving on. You've made it literally, you have to say 10 and you have to put X in the motherfucker. And uh, all right, I'll give Rashawn his moment of, of just for legal purposes. I just want people to know I didn't bring this up. No, I know. Yep. Yeah, but but it's true. dead. It's dead, people. You've done spinoffs, you've done it all. You're doing 10. Then yeah, go back to go back to uh uh, uh what's his name? Riddick. Like s- stick with Riddick. But <laughs> I'm gonna go now. I'm put I'm sharpen, I've been sharpening my skates for this all week. I'm going to cross check a motherfucker into the boards with this because as a, as the star Wars fan that, you know, I am. And yeah, you, you all think I should be going after star Wars, but no, no, I'm going after what needs to end. And that is called star Trek. Okay. Now it's That's fine. a long time, but fact is I like deep space nine and I fell for the propaganda campaign that was Deep Space Nine, thinking it was the original idea and not Babylon 5. And sure enough, Babylon 5, the creator had pitched it to uh, to uh, uh, Paramount, no less, prior to uh, the uh, uh, inception of Deep Space Nine. And they 100% stole that fucking idea and said, well, and, and we're able and had the money and we're able to put it out beforehand. But you know what? They did a good job. They did a good job with the with the whole with the whole process. Yes, Rashad. Oh, I thought no. you wanted to intercede. No, no worries. I thought you. No, I, I was waving because your door opened. Oh, all good. No, no worries. We'll take. <laughs> we'll, okay, we'll take all that right. out in post. Don't worry about it. Um, but they, uh, you know, I did go with that, and I could stick with. Frankly, I could stick with the original series. I could stick with the next generation, which turned it into a cruise ship in space. But you know what? You had Sir Patrick Stewart. Uh, who was Sejanus originally. If you want to go back and watch the original I, Claudius, one of his best roles ever. He has hair in it. It's amazing. Watch it, people. You you had Deep Space Nine, which got into some really heavy shit, got in some really interesting questions, had a a total... Uh, you know, had the uh, the space version of Doctor Mengele feeling guilty about, about all the all the atrocities he had committed. Space they had a Mangala. lot of interesting things. Now you push credulity a little bit with Voyager, but you know what? You still pulled it off. You had your first female uh, uh, captain at that point. She becomes an admiral, I think, even before Picard does. Um, and you know, you you, you push some ideas. You, you got in there, but. You want to piss off a room full of Trek fans? I'm going to tell you how to do it. It's been a long road. That's all you have to sing. You sing those fucking three lines (laughs) and you go back to Scott Bakula in Enterprise where you started fucking going off the rails. But no, that wasn't enough. You handed it over to the guy who kind of fucked with my franchise, though I still give him more credit for what he did than what he did with Star Trek. You head it over to no less to uh, J.J. Abrams, right? And you get Spock, who's already died and already come back to life and already been brought back (laughs) in forms and already gone back in time. Well, he goes back in time again and totally alters the outcome and then meets himself and breaks the prime directive and breaks all the rules of space, time, travel, continuum and a tiny whimey thing. All I needed was David Tennant showing up in the middle of this motherfucker in the TARDIS. That was all that was missing from that shit. You made three movies out of that, which made less and less sense as it went on. Yeah, sure, you had Chris Pine. Okay, all right, good eye candy. And for my wife, you had Carl Urbane. We had that going on. 
But Jesus Christ, people. For your life, you you lying bastard. (laughs) Okay, and for me too. All right, that's okay. I'll, I'll, you know, for Carl Orbrain, I'll dip into that end of the pool. We're all good. But nevertheless, (laughs) what the fuck were you doing with this shit? Then you do Enterprise. Now you're talking about bringing Quentin Tarantino, fucking Tarantino into this. And you have gone so far afield of where Gene Roddenberry started this whole mess. What are you even talking about anymore? Like, what is going on with you people? What is happening? What the fuck has happened to this franchise? You had a utopian vision that if you had just stuck with and kept upon somewhat of continuity, I could still deal with, even if you went back in, ta- in time and or, or went back to a previous series, sure, I could still kind of hang with you in this because I watched every single episode of next generation. I loved it. It was an important series for the time, but Christ, you went off the rails. You don't even know what you want anymore. And as toxic and as bad as star Wars fans are, and as crazy as some of the shit they've put out, they stick to their guns so far, people like (laughs) a lot of star Wars fans want them to cancel and kind of reboot the, the trilogy series? No, people, no. If you watch The Mandalorian, if you watch all that stuff, no, they're just knitting that shit together. Too bad. We're sticking to our guns. We're sticking with that shit. Maybe you like it. Maybe you don't. But we're sticking with it. We're going to bring it in a continuous time, a contiguous timeline into the future. So there you dang, go. Dang, Star dang. Trek, get your shit together. Star Trek, get your fucking shit together, man. Like, just, or or just die, will you? I mean, we we covered how the new Star Wars stuff is really messing with the early trilogy stuff. Um, So I'm not quite sure about that. And I I love where you're at, Josh, uh, energy wise, a little little three of club ish. Uh, And I my main argument with that Star Trek one with Spock going back in time that drives me insane frankly is the fact that if you can go back in time why wouldn't you just go back to the start of the problem i mean it's always the question right and it's the same with it's the same with terminator it's the same with all of it but whenever you involve time travel it's the ultimate writing cop out but yet well the force is the ultimate writing cop out but then time travel is a close second oh both Um, of them I mean, the force, uh, I mean, I'm still going to say that Star Wars is still way worse, but we can have that argument uh, later on. Um, yeah, I mean, you got to kind of try to take bits and pieces of Star Trek as best as you can. Um, I was a well, big fan convenient. of the giant tardigrade, though. I'm sorry. I, I, I think it was Voyager. I don't know. They had a giant tardigrade. I thought it was pretty amazing. <laughs> I mean, at one point in Enterprise, they went back to World War II, right? They <laughs> so and they, that happened. They or went back, you know. They've done and they did the, you know, they did the Nazi well, planet once on uh, on the well, original series. So. Was that in the holodome? I mean, holodeck? No, I thought they went back in time. Official, I don't know though. I like I say, this is this oh, is Enterprise. How, I was thinking. Um... One one oh, oh, yeah, 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 no, okay, yeah, no, this is Enterprise, this is a Scott Bakula one, yeah, so pre-holodeck, yeah, 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 yeah. pre-holodeck, and, and a dude, and a man getting pregnant, so that's cool, that was progressive, but whatever, because he, you know, he kissed an alien, so <laughs> it was like, all right, well, that was I do, easy. I do uh, like how, you know, they're kind of taking on the new battlefield, which is apparently gender, and sex yeah. and gender, so I am a apparently. fan of that. <laughs> Um, this is glass ceiling they're talking about. <laughs> well, I mean, anything that we uh, on this, we anything that pisses off right wingers, we do have to support to a certain degree. But I will say that I do like how I think it's interesting that they're, you know, kind of making that uh, part of the new uh, frontier to tackle. Uh, but um, I haven't watched Picard, so I don't know for sure. That I haven't I ha- watched. I've heard, and... I've heard so many mixed things about it. It's like, uh, yeah. yeah, they they went back in time on it. I know that much at one point. So even at that point, I'm like, OK, can we is it Doctor Who? Is it Star Trek? What are you doing here? Like Doctor Who always had its mission. It knew what it was doing. It just didn't give a fuck. Star Trek tried to give a fuck. And- I think that's very, very uh, kind to say that Doctor Who always had a vision. 
all these properties chase each other. All these properties do things that would make the original head spin. Star Trek has spent multiple decades trying to gutsy up their shit and make it a little bit more action packed, a little bit more, you know, violent in different spots, a little bit more flashy because that's what Star Wars always had. Star Wars has done the exact opposite, try to add more intellect, add more thought into it, all <laughs> these different things. And and the entire time, Doctor Who mean each time shows up like <laughs> we don't give a fuck we'll just do whatever we, we want to we're on give pbs we are on pbs so well, we do whatever the hell we want then, to yeah. if we want to be star wars this uh season we'll be it. if we want to be star trek next season we'll be that too because guess what we're on pbs no one is watching us I mean, they're on they, BBC. They're on BBC, and and you know, since for mo- David Tennant, for most of our life, they were on PBS in the United States. True, State. but since David Tennant, they're forced to be reckoned with, or it's, oh. it's it's taken on new things. So, oh, yeah. all yeah. right, Rashan has it's pounded two close. Red Bull Red Bulls. He is punched I the wish. punching bag. He has gotten himself pumped up. He is ready to fucking go. He is ready to put a franchise in the ground right now. Just put it down. Just like Ash with his original girlfriend in the very first Evil Dead movie. That's how this shit's going, which we could argue that Evil Dead needs to go in there, too, which is kind of ironic when you say it that way. But Rajan, take it away. Ten minutes of fame. Let's hear it, baby. Uh, Absolutely incredible how many different ways the Birdman can bring me off my thought process, because now I'm just thinking about his man crushes and how he tries to hide behind the fact that he doesn't have a man crush, but he randomly brings up at any given moment that he can Bruce Campbell or uh, or Urbane, uh, which brought up both both today. There's no hiding behind it. They're absolutely there. Idris Elba. You try to put it on your wife. Still there. Idris Elba is still there, and I've recently decided that Stanley Tucci. I'm I'm, I'm into Stanley Tucci. Recently, like Stanley where have you Tucci. been? I just I was just watching a new a new series actually by one of the guys who uh, who um, wrote for Doctor Who. Citadel. Uh, so uh, no, it's uh, this is uh, called Inside Man. It actually has David oh. Tennant as well. It's a Netflix series, really awesome. Uh, go. It's got David Tennant and Stanley Tucci. So two people I could definitely give, claim a man crush on, but I was like, ooh, Stanley Tucci. I never noticed you there before. He's a Check renaissance man. He can cook. I think he has yep. like two or three cookbooks. Um, yeah. yeah. I don't blame I, I, I think he even may can play an instrument, maybe. St- Stanley Tucci, the guy the guy from the uh, Transformers film series? <laughs> yes. Uh, no, yes, the a- Anthony Hopkins. Uh, no, I think, I think Tucci uh, was in one of them. No, you're... No, he, he was, wasn't. One was of them. Tucci in one? He was, was he in one, one of them. Okay. Actually, I think yeah. he was in two thought, of them. Okay, maybe so. Yeah. I thought you yeah, were thinking of. Look at look at Josh trying to put his finger up in the air for Stanley Tucci while Anthony Sir Anthony Hopkins is standing right next to him in Cass State. Poor for Transformers. Anthony Hopkins had to be in this. I'm just saying. Yeah. Knowledge. All right. Okay. And somehow Continue we're back to Dorchester because someone else was in there. Dorchester's own. Which again, happy AAPI month. So I want to make that clear. <laughs> I want to make that clear in case you, you know, confuse us all with a certain Dorchester resident who likes to beat something nearly to death, which brings us to the conversation of what we're having right now, because what just celebrated its 43rd birthday is the franchise of Friday the 13th. Uh, It was May 9th of 1980, so just turned 43. And it's one of the franchises that made me think what has gone full Jason Voorhees? What cannot be killed and just needs to fucking die? Uh, What needs to be shot into space and hopefully shot literally into the orbit and hopefully get, you know, uh, airlocked, so to speak? Uh, What needs to be exploded and then decapitated and then buried and then burned and then staked and then once again shot back into space? There's there's a lot of different franchises that we uh, already covered, which is uh, pretty standard when you think about it, because the other side of what we're talking about is success. Uh, Success breeds these things in the sense of becoming a Jason Voorhees. Success breeds these things where you have uh, a series that was so great in the beginning, and then the last iteration was, like I said, 
let's give you Arnold Schwarzenegger doing his best Leslie Jordan uh, impersonation and call it a day. Uh, oh, wait, no, we'll kill the main character that has driven you back to watch this left and right. Uh, success can breed things like, uh, you know, having a time travel uh, put into the middle of your supposed to be super serious scientific uh but fictional uh universe universe it can do things like make you answer questions people thought they really wanted but frankly you're going to spend so much time trying to build a plot around answering those answers instead of actually giving a good movie which is how the franchise starts it's a good movie that people want to see and then see again and then see again and see again where the mistake happens is not understanding that what people are actually saying is they want to see the carbon copy um, with a few different iterations. Point being is one of the most successful franchises in the last 30 years is Resident Evil. And I can argue they have yet to go past the actual central tenant plot. And you may be uh, saying to yourself, Rashawn, uh, the first movie and most of the movies aren't anything like the video games. Yeah. Yes, you you are. What I was saying to myself, Uh, you are correct, but uh, that's the point. They understood that um, in the beginning, and yes, the first one, the first movie. I went to go see the movie theater. I was pretty upset. Uh, I know a lot of people were uh, almost got laughed out of the movie theaters. However, it became a cult classic, and because it became a cult classic, they understood the assignment, and they kept showing up making the same cult classic. That is exactly how you get to maybe like a Fast and Furious uh, 10, or the same thing. <laughs> I know I wasn't going to bring I like it up, how you but... said maybe the Fast and Furious. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. X. <laughs> by, the way, by the way, Fast and Furious X and Jason X. Coincidence? We think not. Hmm. Yeah. And like I said, I know I'm going to be upset as soon as we're done recording because I'll probably remember exactly why I brought this up. Other than the fact that it's weird that there's, you know, a lot of franchises like Jurassic Park. Uh, I I don't know how much more we can do with Jurassic Park, but apparently they're going to keep proving me wrong. Uh, uh, So, yeah, this is definitely going to be one of those recordings where I'm going to be upset because I will probably remember everything I, I wanted to talk about when I brought this idea up. Like I said earlier, it's been that kind of day, so I'm pretty much blank. Uh, so I'm a pivot. I'm a pivot and talk about actually franchises. That I say, you know what? Fuck it. Ride that uh, Highlander uh, wave. You know, you go ahead and be the immortal just one, and let's let's see how far we can take this. So we've brought up uh, Babylon Five is coming up with a new animated series. That's pretty cool. They seem to be uh, you know ignoring death. Uh, we've brought up Matrix, um, which there's multiple different side iterations to it. And I make the argument that the last Matrix was not the death knell. And it was actually them saying uh, without with or without the Wachowskis, they're going to keep making this property because they own it, uh, not them. And buckle up because they're just going to run with it. Um, uh, Resident Evil, I brought them up because frankly, at this point, I'm, I'm curious to see how far they can actually take this, uh, because it's been kind of crazy. I know the TV series did not do well. Uh, that was probably for a number of different reasons, mainly because they probably tried to actually go back to the video game. And at this point is that the horse has long since left the barn. Uh, so that's probably where they screwed up a little bit. They should just go back to like, we just really don't care about the plot structure that the last seven Resident Evil movies have followed. Um, I mean, hell, Mia Jovovich, her, her character has literally been a clone of a clone of a clone. At this point, she might as well be working for the Empire. Um, and hundred <laughs> percent, uh, you know, her aim is a little bit better. Uh, uh, I want to see, uh, believe it or not, Starship Troopers is like up to number five. <laughs> and weirdly enough, I want to see how far they can take this because I gotta tell you, after a half hour of the first movie, I didn't think it had much content. Now, I understand there's actually much more subtle messages that as we move further away from when that movie came out, as well as when the book was written. Although the book actually has a little bit of a different take of what the movie was trying to go for in some different ways. 
anyways, but I'm not going to get into it now. But the point being is, yes, even past the subtleness of some of the very profound messages that definitely resonate more and more day to day, uh, it frankly wasn't a great movie. <laughs> and they decided that as campy and bad as it was, they're just going to keep moving that direction. Probably because of budget, you know, <laughs> after a while, camp has to replace ability and skill and things like that. Um, so, uh, and at one point, I think their budget got to the point where like, fuck it, we'll just make a really bad cartoon. So one movie is just like a weird, you know, uh, CGI animation type cartoon. It's like you're basically watching a video game for a full hour and a half. Uh, but yeah, the, they literally even brought back for the last movie, Casper Van Dien, um, for the one that came out in 2017. So at this point, I mean, let's keep going. So once more, you know, I'm running out of time. I see Josh giving me the, the, the countdown. Appreciate it, producer. I, I, this may be one of those episodes where frankly, you just go ahead and skip my part. Or at the same time, you understand that when we start our next episode, I'll probably have exactly what I wanted to say, but say, uh, the Push only thing that. that's, the only thing that's dead is my thought process. <laughs> I mean, and I have to always give a shout out to Starship Troopers because um, it, it came out in 1998 and it featured its background and extras and a couple of, of speaking parts. Most of people I went to school with in Emerson College graduating class 1997, and I'm not <laughs> even kidding. They were people I legit went to college with who had moved out to L.A. with me. And managed to get some some bit parts in the background there. So we really nice. uh and it totally it also was the movie one of the movies I, I had a couple of movies I wanted to make as a kid, and Starship Troopers was one of them. Uh and I but I of course was going off the book and you know, questions of Heinlein and all of that, and you know, thought, oh, this this libertarianism thing sounds great, till I realized that I like someone picking up my trash. So, you know. We we went with it there, but gotta give gotta give Starship Troopers its due, if nothing else, for the nostalgia value of the people I went to college with. So yeah, I mean, I guess the Troopers. thing that I really struggled with in trying to come up with even a subject or I me mean, a plot, not plot, but what I was going to talk about was I tried to stay away from the obvious, and and part of the reason why I try to stay away from the obvious is. If I want something to die like a property like a Star Wars, it's because it becomes so redundant. It gets to the point where it doesn't even feel like you're watching anything new or worthwhile. Um, and if you're going to do that, you might as well do arguably what they did the last several movies instead of trying to, like, you know, blow your mind open with a different story that they just frankly aren't able to do. They just kind of went ahead and gave you the nostalgia and the fan candy and the fan service. And despite the rewatchability of some of those movies, it did very well and people are very happy. So if you're not going to kill a franchise, you might as well do that. I mean, I, I, I got, I guess, other notes, but it doesn't matter. I, I, I don't know, man. It just. I'm struggling. I, I love okay. it because this I believe this topic was your idea. It was. It was. Yeah, I believe it was. It was. His idea. <laughs> it was. I, I literally it. went back through our text to try to figure out, like, did I put something else in there? I mean, mm -hmm. I, I could go to also the obvious, of like, like Marvel, like Marvel movies need to stop. You know, DC movies need to stop. Recasting, like, honestly, do we need another Batman? Do we need another Superman? Uh, like, yeah. literally, comic books have been out, been out for over a hundred years at this point. I think we can, if we're gonna do comic movies i think we can expand a little bit more i mean how many different recasting are we gonna do for every little thing you know like greg said there's gonna be new terminator i mean new uh transformers there's a new gi joe that they're trying to talk about it's like are you guys serious oh. and, I, and like yeah. actually i'm kind of fine with that if they want to do it well but I don't know. Like I said, my thought process is dead. I'm spiraling. Josh, you can even cut this last one, man. I do have to love. I do love that it was your idea, and then in the end, you were kind of like, "I'm gonna lean in." So fuck it. So I, I I'm with that. You you went total Facebook on that, and just like, okay, I'm gonna lean into this process. So, uh, you know, shout out and salute to you there you know it is where it is maybe we have reached a point as as humans that we were totally out of ideas maybe not well we're gonna have to keep on pressing on no, one way or the so. other uh, you know 
we'll 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 see we'll see what the what the frontier holds on out there but yeah all right guys nice job we were the steam gentlemen vampire hunters today and we mm-hmm. absolutely went out there and you know we went all buffy on a few things we we're like okay it's time to time to you know dust a couple of creatures and uh you know and take it down um as, as a as an homage to rashan I, I, I'm going to issue a quick apology for last week because I was talking about those things that would never happen in pop culture again. And I didn't mention Max Hedrum. Shame on me. I mean, how could she not mention Max Hedrum? A, a to- totally weird fucking concept that you, you, came, you, that you well, came up with that had no plot whatsoever was just we, you could kind of make it uh, an actor's head digitized on there and, and then sell new coke. But there you I go. Mean, that happened. Dude, don't feel bad. We didn't bring that up in the commercials episode either. Uh, exactly. Right. All those things happened. And I did actually watch the Max Ed Rum series. But OK, we're there. But we are at that point in the episode where I got to ask you to head on over to our socials. Follow us on the socials. We are Do You Even Steam, bro, on Instagram. We are the Steam Gentleman Podcast on Facebook. And we are the Steam G's on the Twitter uh until tucker carlson kicks us off so we're good like that until we, we get pissed off and that it piss him off in that regard and fact checked him live which i'm looking forward to doing which is probably the only reason i'm going to join twitter but we're cool on that um please head over to apple uh apple podcast or itunes rate and review us you can review us on spotify any of those we really need your help tell a friend to tell a friend tune in get them to tune in every week and listen it's all about pushing the downloads so we can make that casper air mattress money that's what we need on or it's not even air mattress just casper mattress isn't it or you know whatever it is or, or better help any of these things uh bark box that's another one we're all good we will pour ourselves out for anything we are we are totally fine with that uh sex work is work and so is commercialism so we're good with that it's it's uh, we're all down we're all down for that um we're gonna start our we're gonna start heading on back off into the week after we've you know put a couple franchises down in their rightful resting place gregory got anything exciting going on what's happening in your life yeah i'm trying to wrap this up so i can go watch the celtics Yes, that's true. I'm 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 talking about a franchise that him. needs to be put down. Oh I mean they're I'm in the playoffs. What are you talking about? Like they're in you... the playoffs. They're, <laughs> they're, they're, they're literally there. listen, I'm they're literally in the playoffs. Like I yeah. you know, dude, I'm still I'm still you're, smart. You're forgetting who my you're you're playoffs. forgetting who my favorite team is, so there's a reason why I'm they're saying literally that. in yeah, the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I Don't mean, worry, I'm, man, the I'm Timberwolves will make a comeback. Uh, okay. I'm still smarting. I'm still smarting from the goddamn uh, Bruins. Okay, that's still a, a tender subject. Rashawn, what you got going on over there? What's what's going on for the rest of your day and week? Oh, so if this podcast wasn't <laughs> an indicator enough, I am doing my best to hold on and make it to tomorrow. So <laughs> uh, okay. I, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to get back to you about <laughs> the rest of the week. Ideally, everybody next week. Everybody I out hopefully there. Hopefully, see you. Or if not. Go ahead and put out a watch. Steam people, steam people. I'm putting out at all points. Steam people, uh, bulletin. You got to get out there and send all your love and support to Rashad. Tell him you love him. Tell him hang on. No, no, we we stopped right there. You don't need to do that. Matter of fact, if you love me, know me. You know that's exactly the exact opposite of what I want or need. But if you're going to support me and do anything that Josh has asked you to do or the Birdman or even what uh, Star Child is singing, uh, please follow his directions and start downloading the shit out of this or, you know, do something. Because, frankly, days like today, I'm not even sure if I can remember to breathe. So that's it. You know, help, help, help me out. If that's what you care about. But no, I, I do not need 100 people reaching out and saying they love me. That, that would actually be, make my day worse. Okay. Well, we love you. We're, we're giving, you know, we're giving you the spiritual hug from a distance. We're all in it, man. I mean, if this were, if this were a family ties episode, there would be a group hug. That's all I'm saying. Or friends or whatever it was. Mary Tyler Moore, take your pick. There's a group hug going on right now. Big spiritual group hug. Get it on in, bring it on in. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to go on and continue packing up my house, trying to get that shit ready. Uh, I'll be, uh, doing all that trying to stay out of basically out of trouble that's all i'm trying to do and yeah keep my kids alive healthy uh you know and preferably with a decent soccer season that's all about i'm shooting for uh i'll i'll you know 
keep my fingers crossed for the Celtics tonight. But like I said, I'm already, I'm, I'm still a little devastated from the Bruins. So haven't really recovered from that. So, all right, you know, go Celtics. Let's see what we can do. <laughs> I don't think, don't think the Red Sox are going to do anything this year. So we got Dude, they're on a win streak. Yeah, they're it's on a, a long win streak. season. It's, it's a, a long, long season. season, but you got to win them. <laughs> it's a long season and I'm happy for the win streak. Uh, but, you know, Aaron Judge is back for the Yankees already. And okay. you also have you also have the Rays who are just on fucking fire. So, all right. You know, long season of baseball. We'll just enjoy the summer. Drink a lot of beer. It's all good. But October don't anyway, matter if you don't win now. That's true. But. You know, uh, keeping it real. Uh, keep on out there. Keep supporting us, please. We uh, we love you. We need you, Steam people. We need you to, to get on out there, support us on the socials, and please download the episodes and rate and review us. All those things. We definitely need it. All of the things. Until then, until next time, this is Josh the Birdman telling you to keep your heat up and keep your head of steam on. 